Welcome to Reaching Out. We've got a very interesting program lined up. We're going to talk about some things for the future. What's the future looking like for you? Where are you going to get your, your plumber? Who are you going to call if you don't have a plumber in town? Who are you going to call if you don't have a grocery store in town? Oh, we've seen the dollar stores pick up a lot of slack, but are things changing that much? Or do we call Amazon? Do we order in? What's your future looking like? We're going to talk about that in a, in a couple of minutes. In the meantime, Wanda's got a couple of announcements. Right. We have a busy schedule at Reaching Out. So Reaching Out Church meets every Sunday morning at 9.30, starting with Sunday school and 10.30 church service, followed by a pot blessing or pot black luck. Uh, for anybody who can stay and we invite you all to come out and join us if or be it our guests or just join us on uh, Monday morning we have um, Bible study at Sweet Temptations in Whitehall at 7 a.m. and um, there's a good Bible study going on right now and we uh, invite you all to come out to that it's a good way to start your week with a Bible study and a good breakfast. Um, Thursday, we have our food distribution and we're still going great with that. We have an ample supply of food and a big variety and it's $10 donation for each time that you come. We run every week on Thursday, the first and third Thursday of the month from nine to 11 the second, fourth, and fifth Thursdays of the month from three to five in the afternoon. So we invite you to come out to that. That's out at the church. Um, I don't know, I think that's about it. Okay, Pastor. well, that's a lot. Yeah, okay, that is Okay, Zoe, you brought it up. You brought it up before the, before <laughs> when you came in. I got yeah. a light bulb that needs changing. Oh, the light bulb. <laughs> Sorry, talking about health care at first. Um, <laughs> yeah, my light bulb needs changing. Who are you going to get to change it? Well, I think myself. I think eventually I will figure it out. Um, but my first attempt didn't work because I tried to get off the light fixture and it was dusty and I got dust in my eye and I gave up for the time being. And so I have a small lamp that I use right now instead of using the big light because it flickers. It's not like, maybe it's not screwed in all the way. I don't know, but the light flickers. Sounds like it's burning out. Yeah, something's happening, so. But see, here's the problem you run into, Zoe, and this is, for everybody who's listening, this is a real problem because you might have to call an electrician and they might have a three hour minimum charge. At 60 bucks an hour, that's $180. To change a light bulb. To change a light bulb. Mm -hmm. My hey, aunt I'm had that issue when she lived down in Chicago, they couldn't get an electrician to come there and change the lights. She was only 90, and ultimately <laughs> she fell off the she fell off the ladder trying to clean her gutters because she couldn't get somebody to clean them. Well, actually today at the furniture store, um, someone called in. He needs to get this entertainment stand removed from his house. Um, he's out in Humbird. And he's called around, and the only thing he can find is someone's going to charge him $340 to take out one piece of furniture and throw it in the dumpster. $340. And he's like, I'm 84 years old. There you go. I don't have someone who can take it out. So we're trying to work with him, but we don't do removals, but we are going to work with him to help him out because well, he's sure, a customer. But... but Three hundred and forty dollars for call? the professionals. Have we gotten well, too sophisticated? Well, that's called getting taken advantage of by that by people. Basically, mm -hmm. I get asked to be a moving company at the furniture store probably once or twice a week, just because there's no one around willing to move stuff for people, or mm -hmm. there's no family, or there's so no friends. So, what's happening mm -hmm. to our country? Um, so which part? Well, well, and what's and I guess how do we get somebody to help us old people? Well. Well, this isn't about you, if though. If you're fortunate, we're going to make it about me. <laughs> well, well, what is your topic for this show is what? For people at home wondering what the heck we're talking about today, because we started with health care, switching light, light bulbs, <laughs> and stuff. We're trying to talk about 
we're trying to talk about what we value in this country right now, okay. what we value in general, right? Yep. And you you have us on to talk about our opinions too with this. Um, you know, one thing you're touching on though is kind of like the value of in-person type services, mm -hmm. the value of um, people that know trades work and that know how to fix your plumbing or fix a light bulb that's more than just unscrewing. Oh, let's take it a little in. further. Somebody needs to be able to read my medicine bottle. You? No, I don't. I did. You mean like the you mean like the person at the store? I like the red ones and the blue ones and the yellow ones. I can keep track of them. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when they got <laughs> words that long? I got some that long. Back in the day, they get out a dictionary, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could Google it. You have Google. Quick dictionary. Yeah. So you're talking about yep. how is your generation going to get the help they need to go into retirement and into No, aging? how is your generation going to get the help get? you well, need? Well, it was about you for a second there, and it was about you in the beginning there. How is anyone supposed to get help there you in go. general? If in we, if, see, that's ahead. the question. How are right. we, are, have we gotten so sophisticated and we've turned ourselves into a throwaway generation? But in this, in, this, in this area, in our communities, families are usually around. You know, you usually have some good neighbor or family member or someone who can come and help you out. It's not always like that in the bigger cities in other places. Or even in small communities, it's not like we that We live sometimes. in smaller well, communities. So I, I think that you have to make sure you're on good terms with your neighbors and... Jesus, you should already be doing that though, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know who your neighbors are? You, they can yeah. come and change your light bulb. I know two of my neighbors. <laughs> I no, they could stick a pliers up there and <laughs> mess with it. They just remember who's always neighbors are. Yeah. Light themselves up. <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, Part of it, I feel like when I grew up, like I, my parents knew our neighbors' numbers and that we could call them about something like, hey, do you not have electricity? Or hey, is this happening? Like my parents knew everyone and they probably still do to an extent, but I feel like we have gotten more secluded. And I had an anthropology class and I was, you know, I petitioned that our small communities are so much closer than those who live in a city. Um, but at the same time, if you live in an apartment building in a city, it was kind of nice when you did move out or something, you could post stuff that you were selling and you did know your neighbors, you could post something like, hey, can anyone help me? Or can, hey, can someone do this? And you could make a community on that block in that apartment right. building you lived in. Yep. Um, but with our small communities, I don't know how many of us know our neighbor anymore and how well do we know them anymore and that they could help us out. I feel like if something drastic happened, our small communities definitely come more, come together more than maybe a big city does if something drastically bad happens. Um, like if someone, I remember there was a fire and then the whole community came together to raise sure. money and things like that. Mm -hmm. But for the little things, I feel like we don't know who's in our community as well anymore. Okay, let's just, that's, that's a good a good thought. Let's uh, let's go to this one. I got health care on here. I, I, had a, I had this happen to me this week. Okay. I had a man come into the church and he wanted some help. Okay, that's fine. He has no relatives in this area to start with. His nearest relatives are in Indiana. He has no nobody to act as a go-between between he and the health professionals. Mm -hmm. And he's not articulate enough to read his own medicine bottle. Okay. What do we do with him? What are you going to do with him? Because you are the next generation. Right. Well, um, it's kind of a bigger, it's a big question of like how we value things, I guess, and how values have been changing in the last hundred years about things. 
uh, you know, to bring up a dark example, it would be like to talk about how people were treated with mental illness, mm -hmm. you know, in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. Here, you, this person, person is pretty normal, pretty capable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and he, he got no chance. And they had no chance back then, and now we're getting further away from valuing people. Yeah, so we, what, what do we do? Say. Leave them die in the apartment? No. Well, of course not. What are you well, doing with them? There are services around. Is he an elderly person? Yeah. Well, then there are services around. We have a very strong aging and disability um, organization in our area, and um, before you have to direct. I'm talking about before he gets into the system. Well, there's only so much because then the, our services need to help him out. Because I can't just be like, oh, I'll go help him. There has to be a construct there. So why is he before the system? If he can't read his pill bottles, I feel like he would qualify to go to the aging and disabilities office and get help there. Yeah. I feel well, like Well, the other thing is you could take him into your home. You know, years ago, there were people, your grandma and grandpa, yeah, we took people in our home all the time. Took people into but, your home who well, had see, nobody. This is a problem that you guys are going to be faced We're with. We're back the to values. New generation. Values. We're back to values. People would open their door and let people just come in and stuff like that. And in a rural community that's spread out, yeah, the next house is two miles over if you want to walk, I guess. Otherwise, you can come in here. And so it's kind of a roundabout conversation back to values in terms of you know, we didn't value people very much in terms of the mentally disabled and people that needed to go see a psychiatrist. We don't do the, we there's as much value in old people today. And we still don't, va the value kind of has always revolved around the people that were capable uh, of things. And that is a weird stigma slash, not even a stereotype, I guess, you know. You know, I, we're, we're pretty blessed because we got you guys and we got, right. we're blessed. And our closest but, neighbor is our son and grandson, and there's ever, they bless us with help all the time. But if, what if we didn't have any, any mm -hmm. of you guys? Right. Who would be our advocate? Well, you, why are the values within young people and within people that aren't even super young, let's say, so distant then? I don't know. And not just from old people. We can segue into why is there so much distance between people in general? I don't know. Right. Because are we a country of people that values being connected or that values seeing someone in the drive through or seeing someone when you get your coffee in the morning and saying hi to them, knowing them, knowing what's going on and stuff? Because, you know, that's what it boils down to for me in terms of where the conversation goes for me. It's like we don't really value... We value our time more so than sometimes, you know. We value our me time, which now, after the pandemic, no one can get enough me time or you can't, you don't want it anymore. You're either too used to it or you, we're back out in the social setting now after all this. Pandemic didn't help. Didn't help. Pandemic our values. Didn't, no, but it did change some things for the good. I think we do value one another more. Like I said, there's some people that came out of this, and it's like anyone that comes out of trauma, some people bounce back and they're great and they figure out they don't ever want that again and some people don't. Um, mm -hmm. And so some people got out and they're like, wow, <laughs> my social skills are lackluster. I need to go out and do all this stuff now again, you know? And so, but why do we need, we don't, we don't want to have a rubber banding effect like this. Because that just means we only learn our lesson when the rubber band like hits us in the arm or something or we, you know. Oh, we don't, like that stress rubber band that you, you know, we went to the, we went to the opposite <laughs> of social connection and stuff by being locked in our homes and being uh -huh. whatever uh -huh. to being social butterflies again and to, you know, in the back and forth right. of it all. Right. And so for other lessons and things, I'd rather not have to go through a rubber band like the environments one. Um, oh, yeah. In terms yeah, I get hit hard with that rubber band. It's going to be a giant rubber band. There's going to be a giant scar left upon this That's planet. That's already probably. happening. We right. had rain in December the other day. Am I supposed to yeah. accept that this is December out here? Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember getting snow on my birthday. November 3rd is my birthday. And I remember having snow that stayed. You know? Yeah. And yeah. the well, stories before mine were even cooler. The snow's up to the side of the fence. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> no so, way. The good old days. So, right. The good old days. Well, how, do we, 
your father was tracking around when he was like five years old in snow that was snow banks that were higher than he was. So what is what do we value in society? What will your generation value? You know, I'm trying to write some of this stuff down and I look at my values from way back when. If you were writing now if you fast forwarded sixty years mm -hmm. and you are going to write about today, what would you put down as value? God, I'd, I mean, from I know my, I'm putting my own you guys personal on spot, value. But you're too educated own, young. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what I've seen the most difference is in the States, we very much value the individual. The whole mantra of the United States of America is that we are free and we have our freedom to do freedom of speech, freedom of everything, and that the individual and what we have to say is so important. And I think maybe it's gotten misconstrued that we valued ourselves, our me time, what I want a little bit too much, a little bit too much. Because mm -hmm. I no longer value my grandparents. I no longer value my parents or my family because I am the most important person. I feel like I hear a lot of me, me, me conversations. And when I talk to people in older generations, it was a lot of, we took care of our neighbor and we were concerned about this and concerned about that to an extent. Of course, your generation is still selfish personally to some extent, but the individual concerns and yourself as an individual has gotten a little bit different. I feel has gone a little bit more extreme. That makes sense. That, yes, I see that. At least that's my contrast from coming from South Korea, where my dad said it too. After seeing Korea, he felt like the blue collar or like that American dream was more possible in South Korea with that family and that white picket fence, you know, that people were really hustling there and like there was big programs to take care of the elderly and like there was so much happening in that country because they were really hustling and I feel like it's harder. I don't see as much new things. I ask them, like, what's that new thing in the States? Like the new Empire State Building, the new, the new big, like the bean in Chicago. Like what's something new, new city, like something new that's great that's happened in the States recently? They just redid the interstate. Homeless. Homelessness Not is great. new. Not great. <laughs> Not, Not a great thing. But it's gone up. Right, it's gone up. Um, do we have any new trains? I hear they want to do a train that's going to take like seven hours or something from like Minneapolis to Chicago. I'm like, that's kind of cool, but way behind, way, way behind, behind the entire rest of the world. But that would be cool if we got a train system for people to ride. But like, what's something new that's happened? What's something that Americans have come together and made happen that's super cool in the States in the past five, 10 years? Like what's something good big? Question. That's a good question. It'd be within a state of its own with we'll local news. We'll have Gabe news. answer that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna say in terms of what, what I think historians might write about in 60 years or something is that, you know, we were a country that had our value system down pretty packed in the very beginning of it all, in the first hundred years maybe of our country. Our country is what, 300 years old? 250? 250, Two, 250 300, yeah. yeah. Right, and so in, in the first 100 to 150 years, we really had our, our values down in terms of what the American dream was gonna be, in terms of how we wanted the country to look, in terms of all this space we gotta fill right now. We had a lot of ideas on how to do that. But in the last 100 years now, you know, or maybe within the last 75. World War II, after World War II, you know, the, the post-bliss of that and then the restructuring of everything. Now we are a society that is trying to figure out its values. That's right. I think that's what we're gonna be written about as. Mm -hmm. You know, we, this was a, tr a very crazy period of time for Americans because they had to figure out what their values really were and that they valued overthrowing whatever. Okay. I was going to say yeah. the market, but, the capitalism, yeah, very the Death good. Star. Yeah. They had that they had to throw overthrow Jeffrey Bezos in the year 2025. Again, I'm, I'm worried about your mic going into your throat, by the way. 
Why? <laughs> so that people can hear you without your mic going through your throat. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's yeah. that's a big point, though, that will be written about. In that's this a valuable <laughs> point of time. Let's let's talk about values. We've got all these fancy garbage pickup systems, but you know where that garbage is going? On one big pile. Mm -hmm. One, only one. Do we value recycling? We already talked about this once on the show. But yes, we did. Zoe, how much would you get fined if you didn't recycle properly in South Korea? $1,000. And how much is the fine here, Grandpa? They don't have a fine. I guess we don't really value it then, do we? They throw it on the road and ask for volunteers to come pick it up. I Which was, makes a lot of they sense. They don't even pay it? the volunteers. I well, was pretty upset service. because I clean everything. I clean out all my plastic bottles. I clean out all like my plastics and I'm big on recycling because that's when you're when you could get fined a thousand dollars you get really serious about recycling and I put my recycling out and they only took half of it because the other half apparently they th didn't think was improper they thought was improper they didn't leave a note they didn't tell me anything but they didn't take all of my recycling and all of it's clean. Maybe it was soft plastic. I don't know if you can recycle soft plastics exactly. Uh, you could in Korea, so. you could break down everything. So, but I kept all my plastics together. I don't know. They didn't take my recycling so part of it. <laughs> what kind of that. values are we going to reinvent? Mm -hmm. well, I well, think we, need we just to, need, we need to, or go ahead, Grandma. I think we need to reinvent the ones that we had. Just Key word is reinvent here. What yeah. does it look like today now? Yeah. How do values look in that regard? Well, yeah. it'll. we have a lot more garbage than we had before, so that will definitely be something that Here's um, we have to have a new plan. So I, I think your first, what do you got there? You got your first three here, or no, not even, your first two, or your second two here? Yeah. That's something that I really value in terms of like, sorry, Read those two off, Grandpa. I don't have the sheet here. College. The technical training or the college opportunities, careers. And universal ed universal education. And, yes. And so, because like, you're asking about what I value or what we value here. And one thing that's been on my mind lately is comprehension. I don't think education necessarily as like a whole is the answer to all this. Um, but I I'd love to see people value comprehension and value some of this because... I think I, you're, let me, let me say something, then I want you to go on with this. Yeah. You see, we don't have anybody to help Zoe change a light bulb. No. We don't have anybody to fix her drain if it's leaking. Drano. Drano. The Irish guy. And if oh, Drano don't <laughs> fix it, it burns a hole in the pipe and it leaks. She that don't face. have a plumber to do it. <laughs> and she doesn't have a lot of services which we have taken for granted over the years. So Gabe... We don't have, we don't have somebody to be an advocate for the people that don't have anybody to be an advocate for. We don't have somebody to read the <laughs> pill bottles for somebody. So, do we really comprehend the issues that we have at hand? So that's and that's kind of why I wanted to run with that one quick because, you know, it's like that frog in the hot water situation, mm -hmm. except the frog can't feel anything. No. He cooks. You, you know what that you know this analogy. Mm -hmm. All right, can you say it, Grandpa? Because you, you well, always if you put a if you put a frog in cold water and you turn the set it on the stove and turn the burner on, and just heat it up gradually, the frog will cook. The frog can't jump out of the. He, he won't get out. out of the he water. won't get out of the. He won't be able he to. He doesn't at realize that point. he's being. By the boiled. time he starts to cook, he will. It'll be over. Huh. And so comprehension in regards to this example here. Are we frogs? Yes. Can you tell that the water is boiling or not, though? <laughs> Can you tell that the earth is boiling? Okay, this is in December right now. This is just my personal thing, but this is in December right now, though. You know, can you can you tell the differences out here, or can you can you comprehend the problems and how crazy they are? You know, when I think it was 53 yesterday. Today it's a little cold. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah today this colder. morning was like 20 something. Yeah. And yesterday yeah. it was like 50. Yeah. And so if you can't even see the problems, you know, we've talked about problems and about bettering the self here. If you can't even see the problems or even do that much, you know, it's tough. We're going to think that the world is being 
strung along by puppets or something here. Well, yeah, the education aren't real. doesn't do it. We're like the boiled frog. Not necessarily, but... Yeah, in a lot of ways we are, because um, in a lot of big ways we're going back to, like, you know, Americans as a whole, because I feel like it's a big... American that, thing? Well, I think it ties in. I don't think we're the only ones experiencing, like, climate crises or, like, other things like that. Um, but one thing was a mantra that we are the best at education. We have the best this and the best that. And I think we're lying to ourselves and that we're boiling at this point. Actually, I know we we're are. We're in the 30s or 40s in the world. Yes. Or in the world for yes. education. You know, for education. Yes. And I think Gabe's point about comprehension was important. And I think about kind of what I see it as is what, how do you comprehend yourself as a national or global citizen in your community? Like how, like what is your value to your community? You don't have to, you don't have to be like, oh, what's my value to the world? Most people won't make worldly impacts, but like to your community itself, to your neighbors, to the people you see every day, like what's your impact? on it and recycling is my big thing where okay. I well, used to I used to not buy things if I d was looking at the packaging and I'm like I'm gonna have to recycle this and it's gonna be a pain or I don't know how I'm not gonna buy it because it's not gonna work there you know so it's just how I view and impact myself as a citizen and how it impacts me hold that thought Zoe okay. they took in the, mm. in London England, UK, yes. they took some thrash, recycle, they put monitors in it, and they traced it. Okay. They traced it through three countries, and it ended up in the desert in Turkey. Okay. Come on. What did that say to the world? When, you're, when they're threatening you at a $1,000 fine, and here you have one of the leaders in the world dumping their garbage Ending up in, in a third world country. Mm. It says that we don't care. Comprehension. It says mm -hmm. the, well, it, so, and negligence is what it means to, to know yeah. some, to comprehend something yeah. and then do the opposite anyway, right? And so when we show negligence to the world like that, when we throw our garbage away like that and stuff like that, or we don't have any structure don't recycle or it. process or fine or anything to even keep our people accountable that live here, um, it says that we don't. We and don't how care. how ungrateful can we be? Where actually sixty percent of the food that goes into the restaurants has is thrown away, mm. and forty percent of the food in the grocery stores. Mm. And and is that a grocery store statistic yeah. in America? Yeah. Is that a grocery store statistic in south of the border here? South of the border to eat it all. Uh, right. And so, yeah, we can't even um, comprehend how much waste we're, we're, we're making. Because if we really well, did... I don't know if we're food. getting warm. I think we're boiling. I think we're boiling as well. Because there's food recycling that could go to, you know, animals, pigs, cows, etc. Go Dog go food, that animal way. food, all sorts. It could go and still be used, whether if it's... But it takes effort. Yeah. Well, and so one thing, to segue a little bit here, we're still talking about value for sure, but back to like what our generations are going to value and stuff and younger generations might value is, you know, Zoe touched on it a little bit here with the idea of being like a global citizen. Um, to think about something outside of your backyard. You know, to think about... And, People just need to think about that to begin with here, you know, and look at your small town communities and stuff. But I think a value that's going to be increasing as time goes by here is just this awareness of the bigger, the other countries, the impacts. And this is mainly in regards to global warming and climate change. Um, but I think that that awareness about how people are treating the, the planet is going to keep growing and how people are getting treated. I mean, we have international conflict going on in a couple different places right now. Mm -hmm. And I think we can also look at it as a local level because a lot of it's due to communication and how we communicate with one another. Because that's what kind of decides our values, you know, is how we come together as a whole, if that makes sense. But like, 
I felt a bit worried because Chloe, who was here on the last show, we went to a gun store so sh I could show her. Um, the UK does not have guns like we do in the States. Really no other country has guns like we do, at least first world countries, so accessible. And she was really shocked and she felt kind of worried because we didn't want to make like a scene, but that was really extreme to her. But why couldn't Chloe just walk up to one of those people filling out an application. It was hunting season, so there was a few people in the store. So she was a bit flabbergasted. She was like, my goodness, why are all these people lining up to get guns? Because it's just not, not like that in the UK, in London there. But why couldn't she just go up and ask someone about it? You know, because I didn't recommend it either. I wasn't like, oh, let's just go ask these guys about guns and whatnot, and why they feel they would need a gun or something like that like why can't we have open conversations about gun laws or open conversations about health care and our education so we can talk about it on a global scale about how recycling and how global warming is affecting the world as in its entirety but even on a local level it's very polarizing to just talk about any of these values and I think for the most part people are pretty similar but you know there's not a lot of education in our politics where it's like oh the democrats want to take away all guns and then the republicans want to give guns to everyone and give guns to teachers and all this but i actually have no idea what like the gun laws are in wisconsin do we have mental health screenings do they have to renew their license like are there real legislation we could it put in place to make gun laws that are safer. I don't want to take them away. I understand that that's an aim. You know, if I lived in the country, I probably would have a gun. I probably would for safety. I understand that. But should I get a mental health screening, a background check, mm -hmm. renew my license every year? Yeah, sure. You have to renew your car registration every year. Do they do that with guns? I genuinely don't know. No. Politics doesn't educate me on anything. Are, do but I, would most people feel like, yeah, if you have a gun, you should go in and just like re-register it or something like we do our cars? Like, is that feasible? I don't know. No one has real conversations about gun laws no, or health care. We it's, just scream at each other. That's, just that's scream a very at good each point. other. Exactly. Uh, you know, using the guns as an example, we could use any of these as an example. I was going to use a sample of surveillance. If we're going to enforce the the recycle thing mm -hmm. let's put a camera on every block and check the garbage what's it called cctv huh? yeah nothing there's a system like that in asia yeah right over there in japan and south that korea bad or so. good? um someone that looks at statistics about violence might say it's great you know i caught a lot of people this year and stuff and someone who's committing violence might say this is terrible my violence numbers are down and you guys, you, know. you got your, you got your cameras up. You know they know they're there. They can go look at them themselves. Well, to try and touch on the the real issue, of what Zoe was talking about. So whether it's guns or surveillance or something like that, is there a structure that's other than Twitter and Facebook? You know, we we are all very sick of politics and the forums and how they even handle the forums and how people don't take the forums seriously. I think they're a joke. And how there's yeah, there's nothing really happening. So where is the structure in the middle here that allows us to have conversations, um, and that allows us to actually talk about our values? Because really, the conversations that end up with people screaming and stuff are two people with just two different value sets, and they just don't know how to talk about it. Right. Um, but doing it on Twitter and doing it online or doing it not face to face, it just shields you. It right. shields you from having to admit you're wrong. It shields you from having to actually own up to the actions of whatever you do say or however you do like to argue. That's right. Um, and so I think a bunch of people are pretty much psycho out here thinking they're the, they're the king of whatever they're doing. But, you know, it's not I an like actual. That. They're the king of whatever they're doing. It's not an actual yeah. place that you can get too much done I guess we still need to fact check people and we still need to create a place where we can talk and where we can figure out what people are talking about but it's hard it's really hard out here you see at different times and I want to, I'll share this 
at different times I've tried to get on public radio and I've tried to, tried to pose questions to some of these people on these debates and this. But you know what? They screen you before the fact so you can't <laughs> answer. You can't ask them the question. Well, not the one that they uh, don't want to answer. They don't want to answer. They're not going to let you answer. They're not going to So that's why that's your, that your main news media, they're, they're a bunch of, what do you call them? Don't call them names. Don't call them names. Uh, uh, Panderers? Yeah, uh, pen handlers. Well, writers? Writers. They're, 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 everyone glorifies You never hear the news. But we write know. narratives. I like Facebook. Well, I think it goes back to what Zoe was talking about a little while ago. Everybody is independent. They're the individual, and what I do matters, but what other people do doesn't matter. And so... Well, do, Zoe doesn't want to know, think about what somebody wants to do with a light bulb. She wants the stupid thing changed. That's right. <laughs> yep, and I... So that's... It's very interesting because I think... Yeah, and people have just cornered the market on everything with our society. That mm -hmm. they're going to charge three hundred forty dollars to move this eighty-four-year-old man's entertainment stand out of his yeah. house. I still can't get over that. You know. I, w I think I need to well, hire ten more people and build two new buildings. That's uh, start a moving business. <laughs> yeah. Got to twist the styling, Grandma. <laughs> what 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 you're hearing here is the frustration of what's going on in the country. And we need to take a serious look at it individually, wherever you are, in whatever issue that you're dealing with. I moved the, uh, the took a recliner for a gentleman that he had no way to get rid of it, no way to carry it out. He was he was emotionally, mentally, he had some issues. And he was a good guy. He was he lived there. For, he used that recliner for 12, 12 15 years but he couldn't get it out of the house and nobody was going to take it out for him. So I took it out for him, just like you're talking about taking out but this recliner so, for see, that man. Uh, you know what, Zoe, I still remember back the theme song, um, if you call it that, at your graduation, high school graduation. And I can't remember the man who sang the song, but Always Be Humble and Kind was a big hit right about then. Okay. Country song? Yeah, Always country song. Always Be Humble and Kind. Um, I, I know, I actually yeah. know it, yeah. <laughs> anyway. I don't remember the song. <laughs> I don't remember my <laughs> name. That's anyway, nuts, okay, Grandma. Okay. I thought this was a really good <laughs> theme song mm -hmm. for a high school graduation because here you're being launched into the world and this world out here is not humble and kind. Um, there should be no reason why... Uh, anybody in business would charge $360 to take a man's ent entertainment That's not center out. That's extortion. So I think that in addition to everything else that's going on in this country, we have a big moral issue. We have a big issue of Values? Of oh. values, <laughs> yes. We have well, a big yeah. issue of caring, really caring about the other person instead of just me and how much money I can get home what's in it for me how much can I get out of this um, and it goes down with a lot of different issues that this country is facing and always be humble and kind you know there's actually a scripture and I had it here well, we need to love each other. That's where Eph it starts. Well, Ephesians and Ephesians because Paul was big on the Apostle Paul was big on trying to help people to live right. And in Ephesians 4, 2, he actually says, Always be hum humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And then, of course, there's the Apostle Luke. He said, And just as you want people to treat you, treat them in the same way. Oh my God, I was going to say that five That's minutes ago. Pretty, pretty in the same basic, way. isn't it? Treat How would I want to be treated? Treat others the way you want to be treated. Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Zoe, That's you had it. So I have a short, a short story about sure. they did not treat others how they <laughs> probably wanted to be treated. So 
Um, when I worked in Korea, I had 10 days off a year. They work 50 hours a week, like no vacation time. Um, strict culture. <laughs> um, but one of my five days off a year, I was going to come home to America to see my family that I hadn't gotten to see in over a year. And I booked my flight through American Airlines and they canceled on me about a week and a half before the flight and the only they had no options to rebook it for my one week off that I got so I had to rebook my flight and pay double and so I called them and they weren't even gonna give me a full refund initially after canceling my own flight and so I had to fight with them to get that and all I got was my refund but now I have this flight that I paid double for and wouldn't you think that they should be on the hook for this we don't have any consumer laws in place to protect us currently they have some in the EU and the European Union not in the States um, so I got nothing. I got barely my refund of my initial canceled flight. And when I messaged them, is there anything else you can do? Especially because emotionally, I like I started crying at work. I wasn't going to be able to go home. Possibly, I had to ask my parents for money because I no longer could cover my flight my flight fee because it was now twenty six hundred dollars versus Whoa. like a thousand. You know, and when I messaged them, they said there's no way for us to measure emotional like trauma or there's no way to measure like I can't quantify that in the money. They, they weren't humble and kind. They can't put that into money. And I wrote Gosh, back the European it. Union could. And they said, if you cancel on a customer within two weeks, you owe them at least uh, 500 pounds. So roughly six hundred dollars at least, and no one replied to me. But that, <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought that was insane. I'm not surprised. They're like, we can't measure, you know, the what it cost you. We can't measure it. I'm like, well, it cost me an extra, you know, nearly two thousand dollars. Sure. Like, but they can't measure that, and they that's what they said. They canceled the flight. Flight. They can literally see how much it costed. And so. Let's see. Crazy. It just. I thought that was, how can you have a policy? We can't measure the, you know, do you get anything for not getting to go home on your one week of vacation? That, that how much uh, emotionally disturbs me and how upset it made me. We can't do any reimbursement because we can't measure that. And see, not real. Golly. Yeah. I'll never not fight real. with them again. Oh, I was so angry. I still have all my emails saved. <laughs> and if legislation ever decides to do something where like, they protect consumers rights on flying I have my email saved I will be sending it to my governor <laughs> to my senator yeah. there and telling them my case and telling them to petition at the Senate to get some protection the consumers have no rights and this was at the end of COVID after we bailed out the airlines we gave the airlines millions yes. and millions of dollars and, and bailed them out. But you guys Hurts. deserved it. Oh. Oh, I hate the airlines. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the airlines. <laughs> but see, folks, these problems are real, and we all face them. We think that, that all of these, these uh, fancy discounts that these people have got and these goods are so good, what happens when you break something? If you break something <coughs> and take it back to most of the big stores, They'll give you another one and throw it in the bin. Nobody fixes anything. It's all throwaway. It's one more piece of junk on the garbage pile. Do we, what do we really value? What is really important? And the generation of Zoe and Gabe here, and those of you that are listening, you're going to be faced with those issues. Do we need more surveillance? Do we need more fines? Do we need more supervision? What? Who's supervising? Huh? Who's supervising? Well, the How supervisors we... aren't any better than the guys doing the... It's kind of like the fish, uh, the cat watching the mouse. You know, where do we go from here? Where do you guys go from here? You say we need some more laws governing the consumer. How about laws having some of these people quit selling us this junk? 
yeah. I got a piece of junk on my counter. It heats my tea water up. One time it's 160 degrees, next time it's 180 degrees, <laughs> next time it's 170 degrees, <laughs> next time it's 190 degrees. Oh boy. No, I think, yeah, regulations on how products are being made. I think that's a good one. That would be my, that's my ax to grind. Yeah, you know, fast fashion is a big thing where we've talked about a little bit before, you buy something, wear it once, throw it out, you know. And a lot of it, some of the quality of the clothes, like I've gotten clothes that's just broken, you know, that's just wears bad material. You have, I ordered a waffle maker and my waffle maker arrived broken. Um, you know, mm -hmm. people come, we run the furniture store, people are like, why isn't this furniture made to last? My one recliner lasted 20 years, this didn't last me two years, and I don't know what to tell them. Sure. I'm like, unless you want to pay for like a $800 for a recliner on one of our top of the line ones that use steel frames in them and use real wood versus plywood, you know, but they want to buy the 300 or 200. They can't afford the expensive one. You know, so, and so people are going to keep making the least expensive ones. You know, and I don't know, you guys know, you're going to face with this more than I am because I'm over the hill. Lucky. Uh, but. Ah, that's <laughs> another issue. That's so well, ahead. that's another show. That's but another show. I'm over, over the, the hill. hill. But here's, here's yeah, the problem. Yeah, they disregard you completely. This gentleman is 75 the years old. It's true. And the, the government said they're going to help the, some of these people with rent. So they told him they were going to pay part of his rent. The people that owned the owned apartment raised it to $2,500 from $1,200. Doubled it in one week. And he could do nothing about it. He could pay it or get out. That's right. That's it's the same sad. as her airline That's a true issue. story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he got nothing for it. Right. So I went and helped him move. Mm -hmm. Right. No, and part of it, sometimes it's hard because I've thought about that, like about building an apartment complex in the back of my mind after having to pay what I do for rent for mm -hmm. no yep. air conditioning and no washer and dryer and whatnot. Um, I thought about, huh, in our little town, it would really be good to have an apartment complex that, was that wasn't outrageous. <laughs> but then you have to think about some of the values in our community. I don't want to deal with those renters who are going to ruin them. Because there are, there's going to be some really good renters. Your there's going to be some really good renters. Well, I had a couple of renters that were not so good. But there's going to be a lot of bad ones because there are some apartment complexes in the area that you know, might not be the best to live in there because of the neighbors that don't value their landlord's policies or something. Maybe it's an abusive landlord. It goes both ways. Some landlords aren't good and don't value their tenants and the oh, tenants abusive. do not That's respect right. their oh, landlords. Yeah. <laughs> and no one has any val good value system going on in it. <laughs> Here, right. here's, here's one for you, well, Zoe. I got one after. Mm, yeah. I got a, I got a I good one. Answer. <laughs> this individual, they charged him 200 or they charged him $400 for two weeks <clears throat> in the apartment with Ooh. no heat and no water. Sick. They paid him, he paid him for walls. Just paid him for walls. Yeah. Oh. There was an Airbnb that left a bad review, which we didn't do anything really because I always make sure everything I leave is pretty clean, but they're like, oh, it was like there was you know, towels left out and there was like blankets left out. And that's because we put all the towels in the bathtub. I always do that because then they just bag up all the towels to go wash because we, we live there like a hotel, you know, they should wash them. And they're like, they left stuff everywhere. And I'm like, but were, was I supposed to clean the towels? I'm like, I thought I paid a fee at the Airbnb. Was I supposed to clean everything and leave it perfect? And so, yeah. So this value system right. is really important so, on all of it. I got, so I got I, one after Graham. Go ahead. Here. No, no, no. no. You, you, Yours sure. probably goes in line with what we're talking about right now. Mine is too, well, but it's just different. Mine is very biblical. Segwaying. Because all this talk about values and caring about people and everything, we have gotten so far away from what is right, doing the right thing. You cannot even trust the news anymore because 
you don't know what's fake and what's true. Correct. I mean, how did we get to this point? What? When I was a kid, <laughs> we don't have news. When we, have we were young people, journalists had people integrity. had their problems, and we had issues, but nothing like now, with 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 this value stuff. Watch a movie about and, a journalist. And, so different um, compared to what they the are. The selfishness. Like that. <laughs> That's crazy. I have got, and I didn't expect to be sharing very much, but I have got four pages of. <laughs> Hey, we don't, don't have, have time. time for four pages. Yeah. Of scriptures, <laughs> very simple, like the one about treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah, yeah. love um, your brother. We have gotten away from what God wants Sorry, us to be. Sister. And he, we've gotten away what he taught us everything about how to live and how to treat one another. But if, if you don't, open up the Bible and you don't go to church and hear the truth, then you don't know the truth and you go by what you think yourself. And it, That's it's only partially really true because skewed. we do have a conscience. We have we a conscience. We know what's right. However, a lot of people are ignoring their conscience these days. And... Um, to it, it, somehow to get uh -huh. exposed once in a while to the truth helps the keep the conscious ahead, alive. So, you know, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what it's going to take. But I know that that's, that's the answer here. Go, Go ahead. ahead. I'll yeah. tell you how I think it happened again here. I think we've kind of extrapolated some of this as to why maybe, but I... I think this is like a rug, being like a rug from under the feet type of scenario here, um, and and we bought it in terms of the value system around using the drive-through more than going in and eating inside a restaurant, um, using the cashierless you know registers and stuff and doing self checkout. Um, I think that we're we've been buying this attitude of distance. For the most part, the thing has mm -hmm. gone on for a long time. I and think, social media. And I think it's also why this problem maybe occurs more so in America, with us specifically, versus other groups of people in the in the world. But this is one of those things that we bought. We bought this attitude. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, your your and generation yes, has did. got a major problem with this stuff. Okay, yeah. man, don't. <laughs> your, your generation <laughs> bought it as well. There's a lot of people that. Yeah, that's, that doesn't discriminate it. in age. It does we not. Started it. You bought it. It does well, not. We all, Everyone well, someone bought your it. age might have created all this, you know, in terms of like the movie, watching the Steve Jobs movie or watching any of these innovators that have come up with this, some of this stuff. We drank I love the Kool Aid. It. And I, I talked about this last time, I think, you know, who is setting the limit in terms of like, oh, I don't need a new iPhone every year. Who actually, and should the government put a, like a quota on that? You only get to make this many, and if you sell this much, good, make some more. Well, how do we legislate in terms of how much stuff gets actually packaged and sold? Or, you know, otherwise we do have a mountain of computers and then a mountain of clothes, mount, clothes mountains over the hill, over computer mountain and yeah. over um, food waste mountain, which is yeah. smaller than the rest of them, but that's because it biodegrades. But I just mean like this attitude is something that we've been buying and something that I think is coming from the way we discard our packages and we, that we value our time over these actual experiences. And so if we, if we discard- Your individual time is more important than anything else. This is, this is bad. This is not good. And I think, I think I've talked about this before, but I hope that there will be a renaissance in thought around wanting real experiences, around wanting to learn things hands-on, reading the written word from Jesus Christ to actual people who have lived and had some experience versus having role models that are online. Having role models who are just trying to show you one half of this idea here. Mm -hmm. Because if the comprehension is bad out here and people can't see that this is an attitude that we bought or, this, or where these things could come from, then we need to have the right kind of role models or you need to continue watching good things, good television like this, like finding really educated people online. That's good. Yeah, I want to go back to, to the light switch, to the light bulb. <laughs> Well, you better fix that my light bulb change. You better fix my light bulb. <laughs> someone better come to my house after this and fix the light bulb. 
Yeah, drop, okay. me, drop me off first but before <laughs> we need to, we need back. to make a we need to make a socket you know so all she has to do is pull it out throw it away and plug another one in the, mm. the light bulb itself needs to biodegrade they, yeah they keep <laughs> making things simpler and simpler and simpler and you just it's it's not good but I not for profit right I think there's some technological advances that have been so, 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 so great in this 21st century, but some of them that are like, how many of those like chuck it balls did we buy for the dog because we were too lazy to like throw the ball? Like there was those <laughs> chuck it oh, yeah. balls where you could like chuck it, you know, those Stick. plastic sticks. How many of those plastic sticks are in the landfill? You Lots know, like how many like are those? Hangers, plastic hangers. Plastic hangers, oh my gosh, I have so many of those. I feel so bad about those. If we treated um, all this stuff like gold, we wouldn't throw it away. You know, like how oh. many plastic hangers from Kohl's and Target and then in your home and then that you purchased again oh. and whatnot. There's so many plastic hangers everywhere. But like, but even just like advances, stuff that we made that was just so unnecessary. You know, like we had the whole straws thing happen where straws can be good for people in hospitals and people who have a disability there that they need it. But we could just drink and let the ice hit our teeth. But that is uncomfortable. No, we can't do that. We need our plastic straws. You and can't we need make me. So there's interesting things that we've had advances to make things better for us. But it just made us lazier, you yeah. know. And in the history books, they will write about this time period and about how it was a renaissance and how people had to rubber band back and forth in order, in order to figure out what it means to be in the middle or to have moderate ground here. Because everything in moderation, right? Right. If that was the case with, with purchasing stuff, we wouldn't have a problem with capitalism. We wouldn't have a problem with the environment necessarily if moderation was a key factor in all of this. That's you know? right. And so now let's tie in Jesus Christ and spiritualities all across the world. Because they all practice moderation yeah. in most spiritualities. Well, we're rapidly out of time here. Right. And I want to kind of, I'm going to summarize this as much as I can in one or two sentences. You know, we need moderation. We need compassion. We need to uh, care for our brothers. We need to take care of each other. You know, we have, we have forgot all about that. That's why I would say to everyone listening, I don't care what religion you are. Give your life to Christ because tomorrow it will go better than today. And hopefully we can, we can grow into a nation that has more compassion, has more tolerance, has more understanding. Just look up to heaven wherever you are and just say, Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. Help me. Help me recycle. Help me have compassion. Help me help Zoe change her light bulb. Help yes. me move that recliner. Let me do some good for somebody else. Yes. And let me do it today. That's what we all need to do. And we need to, we need to get that in our minds, in our emotions. It needs to become a reality. Have some values. Yes. Drink some water. <laughs> yes. He's the healer of my soul. The healer of infirmities. Oh!